your homework in last unit, there are a couple of problems that had the average value function, and we have not yet learned it. So you might, this might look familiar when, um, from when you looked at the key and saw the setup for it. The average value function is pretty basic. Um, you can see at the top of our notes that it says our average value of a function. Um, sometimes I write it like this, um, just saying average value of that function, is equal to the integral from A to B of our function divided by B minus A. For another way, you'll see this written as 1 over B minus A times the integral from A to B of our function. So let's talk about where this comes from. I like to think of this just in terms of our um, position and velocity functions. <clears throat> so you don't have to write this down. Um, if you want, you can add it at the top of the paper. But this just kind of help you understand why we're doing what we're doing here. So suppose that we have position is x of t equal to 3t squared minus 2t. And you are asked to find the average velocity on the interval from 2 to 4. Okay, so if I want to find the average velocity, so my velocity average <coughs> on 2 to 4, it's that change in position over change in time. And if you think about it, velocity, think in terms of like miles per hour, miles would be our position, per hour would be our time. So it's like we have to go back one function. It's change in position over change in time. So we would just simply do, for this particular situation, x of 4 minus x of 2 over 4 minus 2. Now here it was nice that they gave us our position function. But suppose that they didn't give us our position, instead they gave us our velocity function. Okay, so let's suppose that instead of having that information, they gave us that our velocity function was that 6t minus 2. And it said to find your average velocity on that same interval. So before they would have given us their position function, we just go ahead and find a position at 4, position at 2, and then divide by 4 minus 2. But if they didn't give us their position function, but rather gave us their velocity function, we're still trying to find the same thing. So we'd still be finding our average velocity. We still need to do that change in position over change in time. But I no longer have my position function. So what would I do instead if I have my velocity function? How do I get back to my position function? How do I go back to my position? We and so what we would have to do is actually find, we would want our position function, right? But we know that that is just simply integrating our velocity function. Now, we're only looking from 2 to 4, so we would just do our integration from 2 to 4. And then we saw the change in time, so we still have 4 minus 2. Again, our antiderivative of velocity is position. So that's our antiderivative, evaluated from 2 to 4 which then when we substitute that in, we get our position at 4 minus our position at 2 over 4 minus 2. So you can see that's what we had earlier. So this is the idea with our average value of a function. The reason why we have to integrate that is kind of the, um, the situation that we have here. We have to go back to the previous function, um, find the area of the curve, and then basically divide it by that interval that we have. So you don't have to... Um, necessarily remember that concept there. The main thing you want to memorize is just our average value is the integration of our function divided by our interval or whatever interval times that um, integration there. So it actually is a pretty simple concept. There's nothing too sneaky with it. Um, it's really just using this formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have right now. So I'm going to orient this real quick. So that's what the top part of the box is saying, is that in order to find the average value of the function, you have to integrate that function. Um, and find that antiderivative, or if you have your calculator, then you just punch it on your calculator. Okay. So again, the biggie is that integral over the interval. Um, and again, if you know your antiderivative, it's that antiderivative over the interval. Okay, so pretty basic. 
the average value of sine squared x cosine x on the interval is? All right, well, all we have to do, we're trying to find the average value of this function. So this is the function we're integrating. We want to integrate sine squared x cosine x. We're going on the interval pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And then we divide by the interval. I personally like it written out in front where we have 1 over, just because I don't like massive fractions happening. So I'm going to do it as 1 over my interval. So 1 over 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Okay, so it's just this setup, and then all I have to do is integrate using the normal integration rules. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one. Um, so what's 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 give us? 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Right. Pi. Okay, so we'd have 1 over 5. Okay, and then I'm integrating. Mm, do you guys know your antiderivative of sine squared cosine? No, what do you think we have to do? We can't do a, there's no product rule for um, integration. What instead should we do? Use substitution. I love that thing. Okay, um, so I'm going to rewrite this as sine x quantity squared. For me, it's easier for me to visualize it that way. So u substitution is going to be our key here. If we were to let u be cosine x, our derivative would be sine x, and that wouldn't allow us to eliminate the inside of this. If we let u be the inside, which again with u substitution, usually the inside or the bottom of the denominator is um, your starting point. So if we let u be the inside, derivative of sine is cosine, yeah, we can't get rid of it. All right, so I'm going to let u equal sine x, du equals cosine x dx. And we do have to change our bounds. Um, I'm going to sneak that up here. All right, u of 3 pi over 2 would be sine of 3 pi over 2. What is sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Good. All right, and then I have u of pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2, 1. I actually really like the use of when it's like trick because I feel like it makes the balance nicer. Okay, so my bounds now are from 1 to negative 1. Okay, that's fine. And I have u squared and cosine dx is dx. Okay, so we did quite a bit right there. We um, simplified our fraction in front. We changed our bounds. We did u sub. Does anyone have questions as to what we've done so far? So now let's just go ahead and integrate. Um, if you really so desire, you can flip your bounds and negate it. It's not necessary. I'm going to leave it as is. So I have 1 over pi. What's my antiderivative of u squared? U cubed. Good, u cubed over 3. And I'm evaluating from 1 to negative 1. All right, so I have u cubed, so negative 1 cubed over 3 pi. Minus 1 cubed. For response, we leave this alone, but alas, we have multiple choice. All right, so we've got negative 1 cubed, so negative 1 over 3 pi. Minus 1 cubed, so 1 over 3 pi. Which would be negative 2 over 3 pi. So, okay. So again, you can see the average value of the function is really just simply setting up your integral, and then from there, it's just regular integration. Um, questions with number 109. Oh, yes. Yeah. So when you do so, could you plug like the bounds and just like, you do um, 3 over 5, you go 5 and you change the bounds? You, I don't know that I fully understand what you say. So, like, you know, when you do do so, normally you plug the bounds, then you can change the same bounds. Yes. So, can you do that? You mean like, you, did you put your x back into the equation? Is that what you're saying? Well, like I did it because I plugged the bounds in. So if we change this, if we integrate with u, we need to have u bounds. You can take your u after you've integrated and put it back in. You're just creating an extra step. So like if you were to take this, put it back in, 
and then have sine cubed over three, or sine cubed over three pi, you would then need to take your bounds back to pi over two and three pi over two. So you can do that. It's always more work to do that, though. So my recommendation is once you do u sub, leave everything in u. Change your bounds, like we change your bounds to be in terms of u. So leave your bounds in terms of u, leave everything in terms of u. It'll be less work that way. I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, so like we did change your bounds for you. But you want to make sure you never mind. Okay. You never want to mix though. You don't want to have it um, u bounds and in terms of x or um, u and x bounds. So it always needs to be the same. You can go back to x, it's just always going to be more work through that. Are there other questions with number 190? Okay. Um, so let's then take a look at number 10. So they give us the velocity, and it says what is the average velocity of the particle? Okay, so we want the average of velocity, so we are integrating velocity. Now, obviously, we know that average velocity, you can just go back to our equation of change in position. Um, you need to change in position over change in time. So you can just go back to that, or you can think of it in terms of our average value, which simply says it'd be 1 over b minus a, integrating since we're finding average velocity, velocity is what we're integrating. Okay, so it's kind of up to you which way you want to think of it. It all comes down to the same thing in the end. Uh, for this one, yeah, this one's still non calculating. Um, so let's go ahead and go through and do this one. This, ooh, this one looks nice. So this is t e to the t squared. Woohoo! I sure hope we're doing the use of this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up. We have. Uh, so I'm going from one to three, and I'm integrating my velocity function. So t e to the t squared dt, and this is one over three minus one. So we don't have a product rule. Um, also, we probably don't know how to integrate just e to the t squared. So let's do a u sub. What shall we let u be? t squared sounds great. All right, so let's let u be t squared. du is 2t dt. I don't have a 2, though, so I'm going to divide that over. So I have 1 half du equals t dt. All right, and we have to change our bounds. We do that up here. So u of 3 and u of 1. All right, so u of 3 would be 3 squared, or 9. u of 1 would just be 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. 1 over 3 minus 1 would be 1 half. Okay, so now let's go ahead and deal with changing this all into u. So we've got now our new bounds are 1 to 9. And e to the t squared would be e to the u. t dt was 1 half to u, so I have another 1 half in that now. All right, so we've got 1 fourth. What's my antiderivative of e to the u? Mm -hmm. e to the u. My favorite antiderivative. All right, evaluate for 1 to 9. Again, I'm leaving everything in terms of u. I'm just evaluating from here. So I have the e to the u, so e to the ninth over 4 minus e to the first <laughs> over 4. Let's see, I think we combine it into one fraction. So that should be e to the ninth minus e. <laughs> so once again, um, we just simply use the average value formula to set it up, and then we do integration right now. <coughs> Any questions with that? All right, let's go and bust out our calculators for this next one. I have So double check that you're in radians. All right. 
So it says what's the average value of this function? We want the average of this function, so this is the function we're integrating. All right, so we're simply integrating our sine of 2x plus 3 over x squared plus 2x plus 3. And we're going from negative 2 to 3. And it's going to be 1 over 3 minus the negative 2. It's just. So, like, if they give you, like, um, if they just say, like, um, find the average value of this function, is that supposed to be, like, your position? Um, so, thinking in terms of if it was like find the average value of this. So this would be like our velocity, and we're trying to get that to position. Because if you think average velocity is change in position over change in time. And so what we have to do is integrate our velocity to get back to that position. So it's like they gave us our velocity, we have to go back to position. All right, so guys, you literally are just plugging and checking this into your calculator. Um, Honestly, the biggest mistake that's made with an um, average value is people forgetting the fraction part. Okay. So go ahead and plug this into your calculator to make sure that we've got parentheses around our denominator if needed. And don't forget, if you have the update, you've got the nice fraction bar. Have I shown you guys that? The nice fraction bar? The like alpha, alpha y equals, I think. I'll show you again, just in case. So alpha y equals, that first one gives you the nice upright fraction, which makes it so you don't have to worry about all these parentheses grouping everything together. Um, but I'm going to first insert my integral. Is anyone using an 83 that needs a reminder of the setup for our integration? So our setup for integration for 83. So it's your function x and then your lower bound. Did you guys get 0 0.05121856755? You got what? The answer. Okay. <laughs> Questions with that? It's really not supposed to be that bad on top. Alright, um, I want you guys to just go ahead and do. Ooh, yes, let's look at the next one. Number 112. It's still the same same concept, but they're asking for average speed. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got Newton the cat, because everyone names their animals after mathematicians. Um, Newton the cat begins to walk along the ledge at time t equals zero. His velocity at the t at time t from zero to eight is given by the function whose graph is given to the right. So this is our velocity function, our velocity graph. Um, and then asks, what is Newton's average speed from zero to eight? So they're asking for the average speed. Speed is what we integrate. So I want to do. 1 over 8 minus 0, integrating speed from 0 to 8. How do I find speed? What do we do for speed? 
absolute value of velocity today. Speed is just simply my absolute value of my velocity. But they didn't give us a velocity equation, so they gave us a velocity graph. So how do I find my integrate my integral of the absolute value of velocity from zero to eight? Yeah, we're doing our area underneath the curve, and then any of this negative area, we're just going to make this positive. So I'm just going to put a big positive sign next to it. Okay, so why don't you guys go ahead and find the area underneath the curve, um, plug it into your formula here, and see what you get. of area we got for our beautiful traffic. For the for the top track as well. Twenty-one. Yes, twenty-one. And then what'd you guys get for the bottom little track as well here? Negative three and then we're gonna make it positive. So we should have gotten our total amount of um, area underneath the curve, all in terms of positives, would have been 24. So this is 24. And then divide by 8, we should have gotten an answer of? Yes, I sure hope not. No, mine doesn't either. So I know, it actually just, I see what you mean. It looks like that's the darker line. Yeah, so guys, do be careful. Um, we have a trapezoid here, like this trapezoid, and then we have this trapezoid. Some people might just, they don't just count blocks. No, okay. Well, sometimes that's helpful. Um, but yeah, so we have an isosceles trapezoid at top, and then we do have this little itty bitty trapezoid there. You're correct, though. Yeah. Okay, questions with that? Okay, so that's the basic of our average value. Um, I wanted to show you something on Geometry Sketchpad, but I think I have to restart my computer for it. So while I'm restarting my computer, just going to keep working on this because part of your homework is to finish these problems. So work on that while I restart my computer. <laughs> 